So we have another great email from one of my subscribers who goes by the name of Brandon. Now his email reads, Hi Keith, I was wondering if you could give me any tips on how to share the gospel with strangers who don't really want to hear the gospel. I always, I always begin stuttering because I'm nervous and then when they tell me they don't want to hear it, then I don't know what to do. This bothers me because they do need to hear it, they just don't know it. Do you have any tips on how to make them want to hear it and how can I approach them in a better way? Now, this is a great question, Brandon, and it's actually right on time. I just finished watching the latest Paul Washer Q&A segment, and a link for the full Q&A will be in the description if you'd like to watch it. And Paul shares some wonderful wisdom on how to soften sinners' hearts that express that they do not want to hear anything about our God. Okay, it's a, it. I, I even had to take some notes because I had never heard it. I'd never heard someone put it like that, or I'd never heard someone come at it at that way. And the way Paul shared it, uh, it's really wise, extremely wise, and I, I hope this short clip of Paul Washer explaining how to soften a sinner's heart by loving them uh, helps you. Amen. Going back to home here, to our homes, how do you approach evangelism with lost family members? How does the Bible guide us in helping friends, family to struggle through anxiety, depression, or other things? That's a, probably a different question, but yeah. evangelism. Well... So many people, when they get saved, uh, they're in a cage stage. They need to be locked in a cage. Uh, they're obnoxious in their witness. Um, they don't take an attitude of a servant. They don't humble themselves. Um, I think that Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through uh, 5, or probably, or 6, are the greatest passages on this question. And he says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving, praying at the same time for us as well that God will open up a door for the word. Quit trying to knock down the doors of your family members because they're like Jericho. They're tightly shut up and no one goes out and no one comes in. Only the son of David can open up a door that no one can close. You need to spend more time praying for an open door instead of prodding or trying to manipulate or trick someone into talking about Jesus. And he says, so that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ for which we have been in prison. He's praying for an open door. And then that I may make it clear in the way I ought to speak. So you're praying for an open door and you're praying daily that when you get that opportunity, you will speak in a way that you ought to speak. And then conduct yourself with wisdom towards out outsiders making the most of the opportunity. Now it's talking about your conduct. Let me give you an example. So if I sit down on a plane and I'm talking to somebody, uh, just, just talking, and that's the way I start. I just talk to people because I even want to be a servant in the conversation. I don't want to be a bully in the conversation. And I also don't want to use some evangelical gimmick to try to trick them into talking about Jesus. So I talk to them and I'm praying and sometimes an opportunity arises and sometimes if I know like the plane's getting close to landing and no opportunity has arisen then I'm going to do something I learned from John MacArthur. I'm just going to look at them and say you know I've had a wonderful conversation but there's something very important to me and that I would like to ask you um, have you ever understood the gospel? And would you give me a few minutes to explain it? Just straight up. And uh, I've had people say, why yes. I remember one time coming back from Romania, actually. I, I get on the, I fly from Bucharest, I think, to Amsterdam. I get on a plane. And I sit beside this really dignified looking man and start talking to him and... Um, I said, have you ever understood the gospel? And he goes, uh, you know what? That's a, I've been thinking about that lately. I mean, my family was religious, but, but he goes, you know what? We got like five or six hours. Could you just explain to me Christianity? <laughs> and he, he was one of George Bush's aides. So, I mean, God opens up doors. But, but what I... One of the things that I'd like to point out to you is I remember talking to a man and it got towards the end and I said, we had a great conversation. I said, you know, may I share what's so important to me? And he goes, well, what's that? And I said, 
just have you ever understood the gospel? And I mean, his face changed like stone. He said, no, I don't want to hear anything about your God or anything like that. And he was extremely rude. Now, I could have pushed, right? But when he said that, I said, okay. Now, you were telling me about your son. Um, so how's he doing in college? And we just began talking. And I'll never forget, he got up. You know, the plane landed, and he got up to pull his bags off the thing. And I was getting ready to get up, and he was walking out. And he took like one step. And he turned around and looked at me, and he goes, I just want you to know I'm so sorry for being rude. Now, if I had pushed him, then he would have got off the plane, probably been in a bar with some of his work buddies there in the airport, and all he would have talked about is how some evangelical accosted him. But instead, it was like heaping, you know, hot coals on his head. And maybe it prepared his heart. So I, I, trust in the power of God. You don't have to manipulate or prod. You do have to be available and you need to try to have opportunities. Now, that was wonderful advice and I hope that that helps. But let's examine what Paul just advised to us here, okay? If you could think of one word that would describe what Paul just did here to the man on the airplane, what would that one word be? Now, the man on the airplane was selfish and very disrespectful. Paul said that about the man himself. He said that how he felt was that it was very selfish and disrespectful. And the man had no problem shutting down Paul's opportunity to share what was important to him. And instead, he took the time to share what was important to him, to Paul. Now, it was all about him. And in his selfishness, we see Paul being selfless. Philippians 2.4. Let each of you look not only to his, to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And why is that? It's because, like Paul said, it's like heaping hot coals on, on their heads, okay? It convicts you. It convicts them and presses upon their heart that something isn't right, which is why the man apologized to Paul when he was getting off the airplane. Now, I think many of you Christians are well-meaning, but your eyes are set on the wrong thing in regards to evangelism. Many of you are so pressed about, well, I got to share the gospel. I got to share the gospel. If I don't share the gospel, my parents are going to go to hell. My sister is going to go to hell. You're focusing so much on your performance, Okay, rather than the truth that God is sovereign over which doors are opened and closed. Now, what you need to understand is that you need to take your eyes off of self and in love, love your neighbor, even when they don't want to hear about your God. Okay, that's the illustration that we see what Paul just shared about what he did when the man turned down his uh, his 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 chance to share the gospel. What did he do? He took his eyes off of self and placed them on his neighbor. He began loving his neighbor by allowing his neighbor to share what was important to him. And so what we want to understand is it's not always about sharing the gospel. A lot of times it's about how you respond to the very people that refuse to hear about your God and his gospel. OK, a lot of it has to do with the life that we're living. OK, and how the way we live will reflect on the people in our lives that are close to us. Um, so it is about sharing the gospel, but when those doors are closed, open the other door that's focused on the way you can live and the way you can exemplify Christ in your own life, because people are going to notice the people around you, the people closest to you are going to notice something's different about this person. He's, it's something is, it's, I can't put a finger on it, but I, I see that something is different. And in that, that can, that can also be a way that God opens the door. So I hope that this video from Paul has helped you maybe uh, reflect on different ways you can go about sharing the gospel to your loved ones.